The Fukushima is a hot topic. Some reports claim we are in no danger at all. Others say the disaster will lead to the end of the world. So what should we believe? I talked to an assortment of experts, and here's what you need to know about Fukushima. March 11, 2011, a 9.0 quake hits, the strongest ever recorded in Japan. And then, live from our televisions, we watched a monstrous tsunami <laughs> annihilate the most prepared country in the world. I saw firsthand the enormous devastation. Entire towns wiped out, piles of rubble 30 feet high. But the third part of this disaster has the potential to be the worst of all. Yet the damage is almost invisible. The Fukushima nuclear power plant continues to spew radiation. 5,300 miles from Los Angeles and still not far enough. Deformities are showing up in Japanese butterflies. The once thriving fishing industry near the plant has been shut down. Dozens of species labeled too radioactive to eat. And there's the human toll. 160,000 families have been forced from their radioactive homes, many still paying their mortgages, even though they'll likely never live there again. Fukushima is an enormous problem that's getting bigger. There are several hundred tons of radioactive water that are pouring into the ocean uh, at the site every day. That's nuclear engineer Dr. Arjun Makijani, president of the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research, who confirmed to me that ocean currents are carrying the radioactive water to the west coast. According to a study published in the journal Deep Sea Research One, it'll begin arriving this coming March. But Makijani says, don't panic. The radiation will be diluted, and levels found on the west coast are very low and not considered dangerous so far. But the question is, will we really know? I think we should be doing uh, better monitoring of food. I don't think the EPA and FDA are doing a good enough job. The scariest part of Fukushima is not what has already happened. It's what could still happen. Every day is a desperate effort to keep the plant from melting down. What's distressing for many is the Japanese government is not overseeing the cleanup. Tokyo Electric and Power, or TEPCO is, a private for-profit company. They don't want to take the uh, long-term viewpoint and just to save the money. Japanese nuclear engineer Yasel Yamada came to America to shine a light on what he feels is a flawed approach. He says TEPCO is over their heads. The cleanup job is too large for their capability. Yamada is one of many experts who say this is a bad solution and that a meltdown is still possible, like Dr. Jimmy Hara with Nuclear Age Peace Foundation and professor of clinical family medicine at UCLA. It's like the fox uh, overseeing the chicken coop, and, and it's a huge problem. TEPCO and the Japanese government seem to have refused international help. I think that's most unwise. Fukushima is potentially the biggest ticking time bomb in human history. The damaged plant is in no condition to withstand another massive earthquake or tsunami. These are photos of what happened to the original 19-foot seawall when the tsunami struck. It was shattered and, as we all know now, provided little protection. The tsunami flooded the plant, cut off the power, and the meltdown was underway. The plant's defenses today are far less. Just last week, Dr. David Suzuki, one of Canada's top environmental scientists, stunned the audience when he described what will happen if a massive quake did hit today. It's bye-bye Japan, and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. And keep in mind, less than two weeks ago, a 7.1 quake that generated a small tsunami did hit that region of Japan. Luckily, it didn't further damage Fukushima, but there were some tense moments. It's a reminder that there is very little room for error when Mother Nature can strike Hello, at any time. Only recently admitted contaminated groundwater is seeping into the Pacific Ocean every day worrying those beyond the shores of Japan. This supermarket in the South Korean capital has provided a Geiger counter for customers so they can test the fish they're buying. They no longer import from Japan, 
but given the close proximity, some customers are still concerned. <laughs> this Seoul resident says, I buy fish here precisely because they have this radiation detector. But I don't really know if it's safe or not. I can only base my decisions on the label. The fuel core of Unit 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. More than 1,500 fuel rods sit in a damaged storage pool 30 metres above ground. Safely removing them is the next big challenge for the plant's owner, TEPCO. The reactor was under maintenance. So, um, so we have this full uh, fuel pool that's sitting at the top of this reactor. And if something happened to that reactor and the pool fell onto the ground, the rods would start fissioning and possibly catch fire or explode. It could then start a chain reaction of the other spent fuel pools on site, the other nuclear fuel that's on site that's still left in the, re the other reactor buildings because there are six reactors at Fukushima. Hmm. You only hear about four, but there's actually six there. And what would uh, happen if, if a fire ignited in these fuel rods? Well, we would be subjected to a, an extreme fallout situation where we would have to shelter indoors for a period of time, um, possibly a couple months, if not longer. You're talking about worldwide? Um, for the Northern Hemisphere. The Northern That's Hemisphere would have to go indoors for possibly several months? Yeah. Japan's former ambassador to Switzerland and anti-nuclear campaigner. The Unit 4 contains... 10 times more cesium-137 uh, than uh, Chernobyl. So in case it, uh, the worst occurs, a total withdrawal will be imposed, which means this can be considered as the beginning of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the...